March is proof that having a lot of reading obligations is not always a bad thing. Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to my wrap up for my March reading and my pile of possibilities uh, for my April reading uh, where I'm just really quickly going to run through uh, the books that I read in March and give a little brief thoughts about them. Some I've already reviewed on my channel and talked about so th that will be a lot quicker and then talk also relatively quickly about what I plan to read for April or what it's possible that I will read in April and then give a really quick uh, writing update uh, here at the end of the video. I'll try to remember to leave timestamps at least for the different sections so you know if you're more interested in the pile of possibilities you can go directly there or whatever. So to begin with March was the end of the uh, first period, the octofinal uh, period of the Booktube Prize and I read three books uh, for the booktube prize in March and they were my favorite three books so all three of the books I recommended to go on only uh, two of which did I think uh, I read in March so uh, the first one of those books I read was Big Swiss by Jen Began I really really liked this book it was my number one book from my booktube prize reading group I thought it was funny I thought uh, quirky uh, weird at the same time kind of poignant uh, emotional uh, and in one place, you know, kind of unsurprised, unexpectedly, maybe a little bit violent. Uh, and just a really kind of good, interesting, different book that in lots of ways I think breaks the norms of lots of other books that you find uh, in prize reading. So this was my number one. Uh, didn't make it on to the next round. Uh, my second favorite book was also from the Book Two Prize group I read, which was Group D, uh, was Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry kind of almost, but not exactly, a stream of consciousness uh, story about a retired uh, Irish detective who's uh, living on the coast and who we gradually find out has uh, lived a life in which tragedy plays uh, an incredibly huge role in his life and he is in lots of ways just looking forward perhaps to enjoying his retirement but we're never quite exactly sure uh, perhaps of sanity and as we are kind of living with his thoughts and going through uh, his days and looking back at his past, we learn about these tragedies, we learn about a potential crime and its solution, and then how that's probably affected his mental well-being. I just thought it was really, really well done. Uh, some beautiful writing. And then the third book I read in March uh, for the Book Two Prize was The Vaster Wilds by Lord Groff, which I liked. Uh, what I liked most about it, I think, was its ambition, its attempt to do something uh, kind of big. Uh, it tells a story of a young woman who was a servant uh, in the Jamestown colony uh, in you know the early 1600s uh, here at the foundation of English colonies in North America and her escape from that colony and her attempt to live uh, essentially off the land of North America and by her wits um, after that uh, escape. Uh, and she makes lots of decisions and there's lots of really beautiful writing about nature. There's lots of really I think interesting and somewhat uh, profound commentary perhaps about colonization and the thought process of colonizers that she reflects. Uh, I had some issues with it perhaps uh, having anachronistic ideas about um, uh, indigenous Americans and how they should be treated and about the natural world which really seemed more like the ideas of people we have of people today looking back on the events than would have been true of a young person uh, in that time period but I really appreciated and respected the effort and I thought some of the writing was really good. So that were the those are the three books that I read for the Booktube Prize. Um, I also I want to just real quickly t touch on two books here which I read for different reasons which I've also already done a full review on. Uh, one of those is The Long Form by Kate Briggs. And I just want to mention this book again here and encourage more people to read it because this is a really extraordinary uh, novel which I think kind of uh, says a lot about the form of the novel as the name uh, implies and about all kinds of things and it's really one of those books which just I thought was uh, remarkable. It is focuses on a young woman who's had a child and is raising uh, this child uh, in an attempt to kind of have a life outside perhaps of, of strictly motherhood she begins to read uh, Tom Jones by Henry Fielding which is considered to be by many people particularly Fielding to be the first uh, English language novel uh, at the very least and then the parallels that she draws between the life depicted in Tom Jones and her own life and the parallels then between the way that a novel works and this story works and just really works on all kinds of levels 
This is a book that I saw on Mark Nash's channel. He read it and thought it was extraordinary and recommended it. And then I saw it on Sarah's channel from Eyes on Andy, and she read it and thought it was extraordinary. And those are two of my big uh, uh, people I look to for book recommendations. This is just a really great book, and I hope more people read it. I have a full review of this, which I'll link at the end of this video. I also read James by Percival Everett. You know, I'm still on my Percival Everett kick. Uh, and uh, the publishers uh, were kind enough to send me uh, this copy of James, uh, which I read and reviewed. You'll find a full review there. If you don't know or haven't heard about this, this is uh, a retelling, in a loose sense, of the story of Huckleberry Finn from the point of view of Jim, the enslaved man uh, who travels with Huck Finn through some of his adventures. And then we learn that a lot of things about Jim and his interior life and his reality and his thoughts that are not even hinted at uh, in uh, Huckleberry Finn or by Mark Twain. And it's just a really remarkable, uh, I think, uh, incredibly uh, crafted, written, conceptualized book. And I hope lots of people read it too. I'll leave the review for this at the end as well. Uh, as I said at the beginning, March is a month in which there are all kinds of uh, readathons. One of my favorite readathons, or read, reading events, I should say, really. Uh, in March is March Mystery Madness. Uh, and so I read four books for March Mystery Madness. I listened to two as audiobooks and then I read two as physical books. So the two I listened to were both by Henning Mankell, Mankell who is a Swedish crime writer who I think is most uh, well known for creating the detective uh, Kurt Wallander. Uh, who the, both the books I read this month were about. I really enjoyed the Wilder TV series that Kenneth Branagh made uh, back in the day, and that really got me into reading these books. So the two books I read by Mankell uh, this month were The Man Who Smiled, which focuses on uh, a wealthy industrialist uh, and then a series of kind of uh, mysterious crimes that take place, which uh, Wallander has to get to the bottom of. If you've read any of the Wallander novels, one of the things I think I like the best about Wallander is that he is uh, an imperfect person uh, and an imperfect policeman who oftentimes uh, stumbles uh, on the solution uh, uh, to the crimes and, and figures it out, I think, in a, in a really realistic way. Uh, and an imperfect way. And in this book, this is true as well. And the second uh, Wallander novel I read by Henning Mankell was Sidetrack. This is, I think, my favorite so far in the series. Uh, it involves uh, a series of ritualistic, gruesome murders uh, that take place in Sweden that seem to be affecting a random group of people but all have uh, one central uh, connection. Uh, and the resolution of that is, is really dramatic. There's lots of really dramatic uh, scenes. As I said, this is probably the most gruesome of the Wilder novels I've read. But, you know, I would definitely recommend these uh, to anybody who is interested in mystery, but particularly maybe in Scandinavian noir. Uh, I think Wallander is on the uh, less grim side of that, if that's possible, even though there's quite a bit of grimness there. Two other books I read for uh, March Mystery Madness... Uh, uh, were by Georges Simenon. Uh, the first of those is Steel is Dead. This is a, uh, a Maigret novel in which Maigret has to solve, you know, uh, yet another uh, crime. Uh, it takes her around the streets of Paris. And then one that wasn't a Maigret novel, which is The Blue Room, uh, involving a man who seems to be, you know, on the verge of having everything he wants, as a wife who loves him, a child uh, that he loves, a business that is being successful. Uh, but he gets involved in an affair. That's not a spoiler. It's literally on page one. Uh, gets involved in an affair that has catastrophic consequences for himself uh, and those around him. And even though uh, Balzac doesn't necessarily always write or write a lot about crime, this novel really reminded me of Balzac in the way it kind of looks at uh, society and issues and you know, characters who are self-destructive and destructive for others. I really, really like this one. This is not a Megre novel. The other two reading events I think I took part in in March were Historathon and March of the Mammoths. And I found one book which I thought covered both. Now, technically, this book isn't 800 text pages long. If I go to the end of the notes, it's more than 800 pages. But in terms of pages you would read, it's about 730 pages, I think. Uh, but I'm going to count it as my mammoth anyway. And also for Historiathon. Uh, so uh, that's Ninth, Ninth Street Women, Lee Krasner, Elaine de Kooning, Grace Hardigan, Joan Mitchell, and Helen Frankenthaler, five painters in the movement that changed modern art. This is essentially about 
not essentially, this is about uh, those five women and how they were really important to creating uh, a unique modern art movement in the United States of America, that would be abstract expressionism, and about their lives, their struggles, uh, their work, uh, and why they're important, that movement. And I really, really liked it. Now, this qualifies us for the Her Storyathon uh, reading event this month because it is a work of history uh, centered on women, in this case, these five women. I really like abstract expressionism. When I was in grad school, I did a study on abstract expressionism. And, you know, because of the age I was, I focused primarily on uh, the male artists of that movement, Rothko, Pollock, de Kooning, uh, Franz Klein, etc. And those people are in this book as well. Sometimes I think maybe a little bit too much, but for reasons that will become obvious if you read it. Oh, by, this, by, by the way, this book is by Mary Gabriel. I forgot to mention that. Uh, but this is a really good work of history uh, about a topic that I cared a lot about. And there are lots of uh, color illustrations to show you what their works look like. I thought it was really good, uh, and I'm glad I read it. And then I read other books for prize reading. Now, technically, uh, The Long Form by Kate Briggs counts as prize reading book for me too because it was nominated for, and I believe shortlisted for, maybe it wasn't shortlisted, I can't remember, shortlisted for, for the Republic of Consciousness Prize North America. So these next three books I mentioned are all books I read because they are associated with prizes. I think I probably would have read all three anyway but they are prize nominated books. So the first of those, keeping with uh, the Republic of Consciousness Prize North America, the first of those I want to mention is Two Sherpas by Sebastian Martinez Danielle. Uh, this book is literally about two Sherpas who are essentially looking over the edge of a cliff or a crevasse at an Englishman who has fallen apparently to his death. Uh, it takes place, the events, such as they are, take place over about 15 minutes. Uh, but mainly what we are doing here is living uh, briefly inside the minds of these two men. One, a young Sherpa uh, who's, uh, who's uh, summited El Everest twice. By the way, they're climbing Mount Everest. And the other, uh, an older Sherpa who's never summited uh, uh, Mount Everest. And we get kind of the backstory on both of these uh, Sherpas, their lives, uh, their emotional damage, their hopes, their dreams, their defeats. Uh, we also get, I think, a real commentary, effective commentary on colonialism and the colonialist attitude and, uh, you know, maybe uh, the idea of Western civilization as um, uh, chauvinist because it's definitely portrayed this, that way here. I don't think there's any definite about uh, any question about that. I think it is definite. And then we also get kind of a history uh, of Sherpas uh, and the first Sherpa who, uh, uh, who summited Everest and became kind of a celebrity. Uh, and then, you know, a strike uh, from Sherpas, I believe, which took place in 2019 uh, after an avalanche which killed 19, uh, demanding better wages, etc. Uh, there's a whole lot here, and I, I just found the whole thing to be really intriguing and interesting. And it's one of those books which has lots of short chapters. It has, I think, 100, yeah, it has 100 short chapters. You kind of alternate point of view from one Sherpa to the other, and you get these kind of history lessons as well. Then the other two books I read <clears throat> in March uh, are both books that were nominated for the Women's Prize for Fiction. Uh, the first one of those I read was The Wren, the Wren by Anne Enright. This is my second novel by Anne Enright. I really need to read uh, The Actress, which I think a lot of people think to be uh, one of her better books. Uh, but I read The Wren, the Wren, and I guess I'm, I, maybe I'm an advantage for not having read other Anne Wright, Anne Wright because I didn't have that much to compare this to other than uh, the Green Road, which I listened to as an audiobook, and I thought it was good, but but not great. I really like this book. Uh, I'm not sure I liked it more than other books that I've read uh, for that are on the Women's Prize long list. I'm not sure I like it more than, for instance, Night Bloom uh, by uh, Edzo Medi. Uh, is that her name? I just forgot. Anyway, I'm not sure I like it more than Night Bloom, but I liked it a lot, and I think one of the reasons, and this is kind of reflected in maybe what I said about uh, The Vaster Wilds by Lauren Croft. I like the chance that Anne Enright takes here. She writes, uh, the book is told from the point of view of her two female characters, a daughter and a mother. And it, you know, the, the center point of the novel is on family relations and the damage I think that families do to one another uh, intentionally, maybe unintentionally, 
Um, but the first chapter of the book is told from this young woman's point of view, and it's it's not a pleasant read. Uh, and I think a lot of people uh, would read that and think, uh, you know, particularly people maybe my age, I can't relate to this person. This person doesn't seem to be, you know, dealing uh, from a full deck maybe. she That, that character makes decisions that I don't like. Uh, and you kind of feel a little bit wrong-footed, I think, by that. Not what you might expect going into the book. Um, and then the second character is that young woman's mother, and you start to feel more grounded. But still, as you read along, you, you don't really, I think, understand these characters or their motivations until you get to the chapter about what will be the grandfather-father, the father of the mother uh, character in the book, and the, therefore the grandfather of the daughter character in the book. And he only gets one chapter, which is really his chapter. And it kind of, I thought, remarkably brings it all together and shows you the connections and the point and the meaning uh, of, uh, of what you've been told so far. And it leads to a resolution that I found to be really, really satisfying. So I think I like this book more than a lot of other people who've read it too. And the last book I read in March was Inner Ghost by Isabella Hamad. Uh, this is a novel about a middle-aged actress who has been successful. Her name is Sophia, Sonia, what's her name? Names are bad for me. Uh, kind of a middle-aged actress, Sonia, uh, who has had some success uh, acting in um, London on the stage and on television programs. So she's a successful actress, but not a famous actress. In other words, she's rarely been uh, the lead character or had those opportunities. She is of uh, Palestinian and Dutch descent, um, and she goes back to visit her sister, who lives in Haifa, uh, in Israel, uh, for a visit uh, after a disappointing love affair. And she becomes involved through her sister in this uh, Palestinian production of Hamlet, which they hope to have uh, in a theater on the West Bank. And she gets uh, involved with the characters involved in that, in that cast, uh, the mover and the shaker behind that, a woman named uh, Marion, who is really interesting and, and hard to pin down. Uh, and, you know, as you go along, you kind of, one of the things that I found most challenging about the book was that I didn't find Sonya to be a particularly appealing character. Uh, it's hard to sympathize with her sometimes. Um, she can be uh, a narcissist. She, she clearly, you know, struggles with that uh, as an actress, perhaps, and as a younger sister. And the relationship between her and her older sister are really strained. Uh, but one of the things I thought was most remarkable about this is how good a job it does at kind of introducing you to the incredibly diverse experience of Palestinians living uh, in Israel uh, on the, or on the West Bank and in Gaza. Uh, because we find all those characters, we, we are introduced to all those, and we see the characters going through checkpoints, and we see the characters dealing with violence uh, on the part of the IDF. And you know, uh, lots of this, of course, should speak to us right now uh, around the world because of the situation being inflicted on the Palestinians in Gaza uh, and elsewhere as a result of the horrific Hamas attack um, on Israel. Uh, so it really speaks to that, but I thought one of the most brilliant things was the way in which um, the play of Hamlet is used to kind of, uh, I think, accentuate and shine a light on what's happened to Palestinians. I, and, you know, there, there are just enough quotes and lines from Hamlet here where you start to see that connection, which otherwise, you know, I don't think you'd see. And I just really, really thought this was very good. Anyway, there you go. That's what I've read in uh, March, which was a lot, you know, and oftentimes inspired by reading groups or prizes. Or, you know, the BookTube Prize, I read more than I normally would. So what I want to read uh, in April, uh, April is uh, Trans Girl April, so I'll be reading two uh, novels by trans women. The first of those is, I think, kind of a classic uh, novel um, written by a trans woman named Imogene Benny, uh, and that novel is Nevada. I don't know a whole lot uh, about uh, this uh, novel, but I, I do know that it centers on 
the, the trans experience, and so uh, I want to read it. I, I've heard good things uh, about it. And the other book I'm reading for Trans Girl April is Any Other City by Hazel Jane Plant, which is a novel to told in the form of a fictional memoir of, I believe, a trans woman who fronted a rock band, and it's told in two different time periods. Uh, once, I think, in the, the 90s, perhaps in the heyday of this band, and then later on, closer to the present day, this character reflecting back and talking about their life then. That's what I think. As I said, I haven't read it, but I'm looking forward to both of those, which I'll be reading on my Kindle. Uh, I have two more books for the Women's Prize that I want to read. One of them I've actually almost finished, and this is one I've been looking forward to ever since I saw uh, Scott uh, recommended uh, over at Gunpowder, Gunpowder Fiction and Plot and other people since then too, and that Soldier Sailor. I will reserve my uh, statements on this until I can review it. I'll probably do a standalone review here. I, I think this book, uh, I'm about 30 pages, man. I think this book is remarkable uh, in ways which are incredibly uncomfortable, uh, but I will talk about that. And then the only other book I know for sure I'm going to read from the Women's Prize is uh, And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott which again focuses a little bit on motherhood, but I believe its main character uh, is an indigenous American who is married to a college professor. And uh, it finally, it primarily focuses on her experience of motherhood and feeling almost like a museum exhibit for her husband to take around to parties and socialize. That's what I understand. Like I said, I haven't read it. Look forward to that. And that'll be five Women's Prize books uh, of the, like how many they know, I can't think, is it 16, 13 they nominate for the long list? Anyway, I'm not going to get through all those books e either. Uh, the other book I know for sure I'm reading because I've already started it is The Hundred Year Years War on Palestine by Rashid Khalidi. Uh, I've read the first chapter of this. It is, uh, it's pretty, it's pretty history, history. One of the things I think that makes it a little bit unique is Mr. Khalidi's family was important, um, perhaps at least in the early days. Uh, Palestinian politics and attempts to resist Zionism in the area of Palestine. Uh, and uh, it, it, is, it is well told. It kind of mixes the personal with the purely historical. Uh, and uh, so far, the first section is called, uh, I think it's called the First War. Hang on. The first section is called the First Declaration of War, 1917-1939. This would cover the period uh, in which we associate with the Balfour Declaration and then the British Mandate for Palestine. Looking forward to finishing that, which I should do sometime soon. Uh, the other books I want to read, uh, that I know I want to read in, in April, are Cuddy uh, by Benjamin Myers. This won the Goldsmiths Prize in 2023, and I believe it is the fictionalized kind of story of uh, St. Cuthbert, and I believe it's kind of very uh, Northern uh, England uh, focused and uh, don't know a whole lot more about it, but I've seen it recommended by lots of people. Uh, primarily, I think most by uh, Bob the Booker has recommended this, this book and championed this book for more than a year. And then uh, I also want to read Cross Stitch uh, by Yasmina Barrera. Uh, this is a book which um, I saw again on Sarah from Eyes on Indies channel. Uh, which involves friendship between three women uh, and kind of explores the issues of friendship, love, grief, etc. And I really like this cover, uh, but there you go, there's that book. And then uh, a book that won the Women's Prize, I believe two years ago now, I can't read the sticker right here, is uh, The Book of Form and Emptiness by Ruth Ozeki, which I know Scott, I believe, from Gunpowder Fiction and Plot, among lots of other people, have said is really great. Uh, it is more than 500 pages, and you know how I feel about long books. And then I want to go back to reading uh, Louise Erdrich. I'd like to be able to do a video, you know, where not to start with Louise Erdrich, but I want to read at least two more of her novels. Uh, and so I do have a copy of The Last Report of the Miracles at Little Nohorts, and I also have a copy of The Bingo Palace, which I forgot to put on my desk to hold up here. Uh, but I want to read one of those two this month, so I'll just hold this one up. Uh, Anyway, so that's what I, those are my pile of possibilities of my planned reads or my hope for reads uh, for April. Uh, I have been uh, writing, uh, my, I've been writing a mystery novel or a police detective novel or a murder mystery. I'm not sure how exactly to describe it. Uh, and I won't go much further than that, but I will say that uh, I've completed 15 chapters. They're not long chapters, but, but 15 chapters. I'm writing this in, as a collaboration with my wife. One of the things we share in common is love for mysteries, particularly uh, television mystery series. We love those. 
She reads different mysteries than I do, but we figure together we know a whole lot about uh, the genre. And so uh, right now we are working our way through the basics of the plot, get this first draft where we have the plot and all the you know clues and that lead up to perhaps uh, who the killer is. Um, and we want to get there, and then we're going to go back and fill in a lot of the detail and, you know, the color, the place, the characters, those kind of things, and develop them more. But but that's going really, really well. I'm enjoying uh, doing that. Uh, usually when I'm writing about a chapter every third day or every fourth day uh, and spending the time between thinking about uh, the next chapter, that's going really, really well. Uh, and so, you know, that's where we are. Anyway, there you go. There is my uh, March wrap-up and my April pile of possibilities and a little writing update. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.